Welcome back to CW Iowa Live. Lou and Jackie here, Alrighty. along with our good friend Michael Jenkins from the Jenkins Law Firm as we uh, talk the world of bankruptcy. Now, last week, Michael, we talked about uh, how do you pick a bankruptcy mm -hmm. attorney? and with the best route to go, make sure that you are speaking the same language. So we have selected our bankruptcy attorney. Now it's time to get the business. Yeah, so um, I decided that we would uh, speak today about if you're a, uh, running a small business, uh, what should you bring to your initial appointment? In the past, we've kind of focused on what individuals should bring to the appointment. Mm -hmm. And in some respects, it's similar, but um, there's a, a lot more complications when you're trying to figure out what to do with a person running a small business. I was going to say, how much more complicated is it? Because there's a lot, uh, <laughs> Iowa is always encouraging small businesses, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. things like that. So there's probably quite a few that you would deal with. Uh, unfortunately, those businesses a lot of them don't, don't always work. don't mm -hmm. work or don't always make money. You know, we, we encourage them as best we can. So how much more complicated is that? Well, they're dealing in a lot bigger volume of debt than an individual is going to be. And there's going to be a uh, big bank uh, lending institutions that are involved with very large loans often. Are we talking thousands, tens Milli of thousands, sometimes hundreds, hundreds millions of thousands even. or into millions? Into the millions. Really? Depending okay. upon okay. the size of the business. And uh, where we have an individual, the property a person has is somewhat limited to their home and its contents and uh, very common type things in an automobile, but in a business you have uh, potentially an extensive amount of assets to look at from real estate to equipment to inventory. Is there a certain number or is it just when you become uncomfortable that you would look at your business and be like, okay, it's time that I need to start looking at bankruptcy? Well, it's, it's, it's there's certainly a lot of discomfort. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm some imagine. people are uncomfortable from the day they turn on the lights, but uh, <laughs> uh, for good reason But when sometimes. they turn that sign over, it says <laughs> open from right. that point on. But um, no, I mean, things start to slip. Uh, people aren't paying their payroll taxes okay. uh, instead of using the money to uh, buy uh, supplies. Uh, that's kind of a bad sign. Things aren't going quite right. right. Uh, people aren't paying their sales taxes to the state that they should and are slipping behind. And they're getting a lot of heat from the taxing authority to catch up and stay current or be closed. Okay. So uh, things like that or just... Uh, <laughs> Payroll check start to bounce, bounce is usually yeah. a bad right. signal. So those are kind of the warning signs that are going off. So we know we need to call you, which we have. We've decided you're our attorney. Now what do we need to bring in to make sure we're prepared? So just like the individual or the husband and wife that come to see me for a consumer bankruptcy, it's very important uh, that we see a list of the debts. So we ask to please write down all of the business debt as best as you're able all the bank notes and any other kind of loans and the payables and things of that nature, any tax obligations. And then we also want to know the personal debts because mm -hmm. uh, many people fall into the trap of uh, besides all of the normal business kind of debt, uh, they start supplementing the business with credit cards. Uh, there's not and enough money coming, cards? personal credit cards. Ooh. Now, how does an LLC come into play here too? Because sometimes they have a limited liability corporation. Uh, does that does that bleed over to the personal area too or not? Well, so well, the type of businesses that I'll be dealing with typically are going to be the sole proprietor, which is just a person that's operating a business under their own name, and they may choose a DBA and operate under some coin free, okay, right? Okay. Uh, then they could operate as an LLC, limited liability company, and then the other common uh, one we'll see is an S corporation, which bears many similarities to an LLC. Okay. So, I mean, when you have an LLC, a lot of the uh, a lot of the stuff from that is falling back on a person individually. There's a lot of personal guarantees that a person has to make when they operate an LLC or an S corporation or a C corp for that matter. Uh, the banks and the lending institutions and even the credit card companies usually require uh, a guarantee by the individual that's running the operation to back the debt okay. uh, because they don't want to be left holding the bag if a company closes and the person can walk away scot-free. Are, are you filing for a personal bankruptcy as well as a small business if you're dipping into your personal credit cards to help fund things? Well, most of the time if the company is going to close, then we're going to be filing an individual bankruptcy for the person. You are as well. Um, well, most of the time uh, a Chapter 7 bankruptcy isn't going to necessarily be warranted for the company. There's no purpose to it. Okay. Um, essentially, the individual is wanting to be removed from all of the personal debt right. and, the, and the debt that he or she is guaranteed for the company, which most of the time is almost all of it. 
So um, there are no assets usually left for the small business. They're usually tied up with banks who just get it back. So there's really not a liquidation that would occur for a S Corp or a um, LLC because it's usually all pledged to the lending institutions and they just get it. So there's nothing for the bankruptcy court to liquidate usually and there's no purpose to it. Okay. So you have to have a list of all your debts. So we want to know what those debts are when you come to the appointment. We need to see how bad off the company and the mm -hmm. people are that are operating and owning it. So that's very important, um, just like the person. The next thing that's very important um, is that we want to see the last required tax filings. So if you're an LLC or an S Corp, uh, there may be a company return in addition to your personal return. Um, some single member LLCs, uh, you, a lot of those, the, co the accountants and tax preparers will just prepare a Schedule C as part of the personal See, return. It's, it's rather basic, isn't it? It's that, pretty that, it's basic. It's a rather simple one, isn't it? Yeah, and that, now if you're an S corporation, then there has to be a separate tax return filed, and then essentially the profit uh, comes over to the personal return. And so we, we have to look at these returns because we want to evaluate these and see um, what the trends are, uh, how the income is in that return compared to the year that we're seeing, which is usually the following year, and seeing if things have slid down as far as the sales coming in, or if expenses have gotten way out of hand. We can talk, you know, tell. Uh, uh, from looking at the tax returns and give advice whether the person should even take a chance on trying to keep the business going right. because if the business is what has taken you down uh, there may not be a point in taking bankruptcy and trying to keep the business still going if that's the reason that you're having to file bankruptcy. Sometimes there are cases where after doing the evaluation we find that um, there's been outside influences that have caused the bankruptcy and the business itself might be able to sustain itself going forward uh, maybe in a more limited capacity and so and again that'll depend on if there's bank involvement and where they've tied up all the collateral. Is it outside influences like what would be an example of an outside influence that would influence them? Well sometimes people will be operating uh, more than one business they'll get some Thing going and then they'll get another business going too and so one's kind of taken down the other where one has been doing okay for itself the okay. other one's been doing miserably and so it's essentially bleeding any money out of the one that is making a go so of it. They, are they borrowing out of each other's funds then to, to well, keep the businesses going? One is one borrowing is, yeah. from the other yeah. and so sometimes somebody will have a decent business going and so they get greedy and decide well uh, why don't we do two? It's you know twice the fun, and um, usually it's not. Uh, often, when a company restaurant business is an example, mm -hmm. they'll have a restaurant going. It's doing well for years, and they'll go, "Let's open up another one." Right. Well, just because you've been fortunate enough mm -hmm. to have one successful doesn't mean the other one is, and the other one can take you both down. Right. And I've seen that happen As time say, and time I've again. I have no friends where that's uh, yeah. happening. Same here. And so we need to evaluate that. <laughs> the other thing that's really important that we need to see in an appointment. We ask people to bring at least six to 12 months of monthly profit and loss statements for the business okay. so that we can evaluate again in more depth than the tax returns are going to show on uh, exactly what's going on with the company. And so sometimes people don't keep very good books. So when I talk about profit and loss statement, I think sometimes they think of a foreign term I'm using. <laughs> <laughs> and they, you know, they may just, their idea is bringing a box full of stuff. Right, uh, and here it is, that isn't receipts, what we want yeah. to see. But um, the people that are using some kind of computer program like QuickBooks or right. some of the other ones are able to put this together if they've kept up inputting the information into their computer system. But, um, and then the other thing we have troubles with sometimes when people bring those is we look at them and they're having a lot of their personal expenses coming out of the expense side. Right. Mm -hmm. And so Can't that isn't that. really giving a true story about where things yeah. are at. And so they have depreciation too because they think it's a tax return and that's not an expense. So we really want real expenses of the business that you got to write a check for each month or money's coming out of the bank account so we can compare that to the sales or the revenue that's coming in and see are you making any money in any of these months? Mm -hmm. Are you losing money every single month or is it kind of going up and down right. so we can figure out uh, you know do you got to just turn off the lights next week because you're losing money every uh, month which sometimes we have to recommend and there's never a good time to call quits or close. Right. No. There's always going to be inconveniences. You got to tell employees, people have got customers that are expecting things. 
and sometimes you just can't produce. Um, and so there's never going to be a good time to say we're done. But there comes a time when you have to say you're done, though. You got to call. Yeah, you got to you you call. call it, and that's the, and speaking of calling, that's when we need to call you <laughs> is to try to get an idea as when to do that, when to pull the plug on something like this uh, for your own sanity, amongst other things. Right, because okay. it can affect people's health, the stress that it that's imposes true. too, and other people's lives. So if people want to get in touch with you if they have more questions. Of course, you do offer a free consultation uh, for people to talk to you through uh, further upon what we're talking about this morning. So how can they get in touch with you, Michael? Well, you can reach me on the phone at 255-1855. You can find us on the internet at www.iowa-bankruptcy.com, or you can follow us on Facebook. There you Perfect. Go. Well, thank you, Michael. Again, an uncomfortable thing to talk about, especially when you have a business that you're so proud of and sometimes they just don't work. And mm -hmm. you had time to say, I know that's enough for this one. And you're the guy to talk to to help put that in line. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. It is 8.51 right now.